Okay, so today we're going to look at the cosine law used to find the missing angle. Okay. And the formula that I have here for cos A is just the formula that was from yesterday that was solving for side, say A squared, rearranged to solve for cos A. And so it's the same formula rearranged. And when it comes to the final exam time, I believe you're only given the one formula, just the A squared equals formula and you, you're expected to rearrange it so that you can solve for cos A. Okay. So that's the one formula that you're given. Okay. You can quickly get the other ones for the other angles. Okay. So for cos B, there's your formula. Okay. The same type of thing. Okay. So and again, if I wanted angle C, okay. you take the two sides that aren't involved. So have A and B, so this one would be A squared plus B squared, subtract this angle, and that side length, all over to A and B. So you can rearrange for any one of your three formulas that you wrote down yesterday, and rearrange the formula to solve for the angle. Okay. And today I wanted to show what you might do if you're given a triangle like this. It's not labeled R A B C, it's labeled R S T. And let's pretend that I wanted uh, to solve for this angle right here. Okay? Well, that's not A, B, or C, okay? but I can label it however I want. Okay? So I can label this as A if I want. Okay? So I just take this one off and label it as A, and then call the other two whatever you like as well. Okay? So there we'll call this B, we'll call this C. Now, since I was looking for that angle, I can use the one formula that I've rearranged for. Okay? So I'll get rid of these ones. And we're, we'll fill in our formula. Okay? So the cos of my angle A is equal to my side length B. So here's B. And so across from that angle is my side length B. Here's my side length C. Here's my side length A. And we should always label the the triangle before you start. Fill in the formula. So B is going to be 25 squared plus C, so C, which is going to be 10 squared um, minus my A squared, so minus 29 squared, okay. all divided by 2 onto BC, which is 25 and 10. Then I'm going to have the cos of A is equal to, and you fill this into your calculator. The bottom is easy enough. 2 times 25 is 50. 50 times 10 is 500. So I'm not going to use the calculator for that one. And on the top, I'm going to go 25 squared in my calculator. And it's going to give me 625 plus 10 squared is 100. Subtract 29 squared, so 29 squared is 841. So that's going to give me um, 725 subtract 841, which is negative 116 divided by 500. So then I end up that the cos of my angle A is equal to divide that by 500, and I get negative 0 decimal 232. Two. And I recommend keeping at least three decimals. You can keep more if you like, or if you're using a TI calculator. Um, a lot of the times you go through these uh, questions just using the answer function, so you're always keeping all of the decimal places. And so that gives me what the cos of angle A is. But I want to know what the angle A is. And so we do the inverse cos of that. So inverse cos of um, negative decimal 232 okay. um, on radians. Don't forget to put your uh, calculator in degrees. This one 
does not want to go, so I'll have to switch calculators. solving the triangle is they want all of the side lengths and all of the angles. Okay? So I've got all of the side lengths already. I've got one of the angles okay? and I'm missing the other two angles. Well really I only have to find one of the other two angles okay? and I won't be using either the sine law or the cosine law. Okay? And the third one you're getting you're just going to use the angles of the triangle theorem so I'm going to go 180 subtract two that I solve. Okay, so let's say uh, we're going to get angle B next. Okay, again, you pick whether you want to use the cosine law or the sine law. Okay, I'll use the sine law, which says that um, B over sine B is equal to, okay, well, the two that I know everything about are A and side A, okay, so A over sine A. Okay, so my side length B is 25. Sine B is what I'm trying to find. My side length A is 29 divided by the sine of 103. Cross multiply. And so then I have 29 times the sine of B is equal to 25 times the sine of 103 degrees. Okay. So I'll finish that here. Okay. So I have to, I want sine B all by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 29. Okay. And I get that the sine of B is equal to 25 times the sine of 103 degrees all divided by 29. So we're going to plug that into our calculator and see what we get. So I'm going to take the sine of 103 degrees, multiply that by 25, divide that by 29, and I get 0.839. Uh, I could have kept more decimal places, but I, I gained keep at least three. Okay. And once again, I have what the sine of B is, and I want to know what the angle B is. So we're going to use our inverse sine function, or the sine negative one of that decimal place. Okay. So in my calculator, I'm going to go inverse sine of 0 decimal 839, and it gives me 57 degrees. So I have 57 degrees in here. Now you can get the last angle, which is the last thing that I don't know on this question, by doing the angle sum of the triangle theorem. In other words, all angles in the triangle add up to 180. So 103 plus 57 is 160. Okay, so that means I have 20 degrees left for angle C. And now you've solved the whole triangle. And once again, it's your preference after you've got here and you've solved for this angle whether you use the sine law or the cosine law to solve for either one of these, either one will work. 